This is election 2022 featuring New Mexico House District 33. I'm Anthony Murnell. Thank you for joining us. KRWG Public Media and the League of Women Voters are pleased to present this forum. The rules for this forum are simple. Candidates have up to 60 seconds to answer each question and should not mention their opponents in the answer. My co-moderator for this forum is Kim Sorensen with the League of Women Voters of Southern New Mexico. And we also want to welcome both candidates, Democratic incumbent Micaela Lara Cadena and Republican challenger candidate Charles Wendler. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having us. We now start with the first question for the incumbent candidate, Representative Lara Cadena. Public safety has been a concern for many New Mexicans in recent years. What are some things that state lawmakers can do to support and to improve public safety in New Mexico? Please explain. Thank you, Anthony and Kim, for hosting this important forum. I would say one of the things that's hardest for elected officials to do is to admit when we don't know the answers. When I think about what it means to have communities and neighborhoods and a state where people feel safe um, moving through their lives and hopefully thriving, I think it's time we admit that the root problems about that connect back to crime in New Mexico and, and the questions we have about public safety are complicated. They are generations deep and they're going to take generations of investments to address. So I think the first important thing is to say before and after elections, we don't exactly know how to move forward, but we need to have honest conversations across our communities because we live and represent distinct communities about what families are most worried about, what families are proud of, and how we make the right kind of investments so that our families have room to thrive. Okay. Now for candidate Wendler, same question. Would you like me to rephrase it? No, I think I remember it. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the question, Anthony. Uh, let me use an expression that we hear quite frequently. Uh, different people have different feelings about it, but back to blue. Well, of course, we also have the black and gray state troopers, okay? And we have the camouflage, uh, you know, with military, so forth and so on. But the bottom line is if we're gonna have safety We've got to be able to support these people that have been charged, elected, appointed, or whatever have you, even judges, to support this whole concept of law and order. And we base this wonderful, exceptional country on that basic principle. See, I work in big concepts. That's the big concepts. It's not about investing, okay? It's about investing yourself into respecting that. Okay? We don't get caught up in the money thing, although that obviously is necessary, but how much do you need? Okay? But if we again go back to what we've always had in the past, and it's worked quite well for a long time, and that is have to have mutual okay, respect. That is, that is our time. We now are Thank going you. to our co-moderator, Kim Sorensen, with the League of Women Voters of Southern New Mexico. Thank you. Um, candidate Wendler, we'll start with you for the second question. Some have criticized New Mexico for not doing enough to address mental health in the state. There are limited state-run facilities available to serve a large, diverse geographical area that faces economic challenges. What are some top things state lawmakers can do to improve mental health resources in this state? Well, I'm gonna answer that question probably from a perspective that a lot of people haven't thought of. And that is, has the state legislators, have they gone to our spiritual leaders and asked for their help? We don't do that, do we? We're compartmentalized. State's over there, our spirituality is over there. They're in two separate compartments. That doesn't make sense. Our national model is in God we trust. That's, that's in the books, it's on the records. Do we do that? So I would say we need to, it's, it's about personal accountability, first of all. And yes, a lot of people have lots of problems. What we're seeing is a manifestation of the breakdown in relationships, okay? And people are having a challenging time to handle the relationships with each other. So, we're, you know, latest research shows that the American home- Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Cadena. Well, I mean, it's not very, <laughs> not enough time to get into it. Do you care to answer the question or would you like Absolutely. me to repeat it? I'm ready. 
I started my morning with my therapist, a licensed social worker, master social worker. And I'm so grateful that I've had the care and trust in that provider relationship for four years now. And when I think about the weight and complexities of what New, Mexi New Mexicans carry every day, I know that we have to figure something out to make sure that people have access to behavioral health resources before, when, and after they need it. I'm incredibly proud that here at New Mexico State University, I, used, uh, I was able to invest junior bill funding to fund a new position through cooperative extension so that in all of our counties, in rural New Mexico, in urban New Mexico, we have more conversations, open, honest, accurate, timely conversations about what folks need and what folks are experiencing. So NMSU is a model, we need to follow suit, we need to find trusted people and make sure they're in the place to catch folks when they need it. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to the next question, starting with Representative Laura Cadena. There's a saying that water is life. As New Mexico continues to face a historic drought, experts are warning of a future with less water being available. What can state lawmakers do to address our water future so future generations will have enough of this precious resource? Thank you. Water is life. Um, I'm proud that I've been in a family where we've had water rights and tried to be responsible water users over generations. It's my understanding that in the body today out of our Southern New Mexico Doniana County delegation, Senator Cervantes and myself at very different levels are the only elected officials that actually have water rights and irrigate in different capacities. I know and trust New Mexicans, including our incredible farmers, our ranchers, our ag community to make smart decisions about water every day. Much of what happens in water policy, we saw that this week with federal announcements, happens at a federal level. But in our state, we need to have more honest conversations about what happens post adjudication when these rights are delivered. I believe firmly, as the law says, sovereign nations, our indigenous nations, have first right to water usage. But after that, northern New Mexico gets real water and we get nothing. So we need to talk more sternly and assertively about making sure southern New Mexico gets the water we're entitled to. Okay, thank you very much. Candidate Wendler, same question. You know, I, uh, I also have EBID rights as well, so I'm familiar with that situation. Um, to conserve our water, it's such a precious resource. We've not been doing enough. We have a great deal of brackish water in our state that hasn't even been looked into to get it out of the ground. And now you can get it out of the ground another way, okay, but we'll talk about that later. So we got brackish water, there's lots of it, getting it out of the ground and supplying it. So there's a resource that's not really been tapped into as well as it could have been, okay? Um, and furthermore, what about bringing in pipelines? If it gets really desperate and dire, we should be starting a conversation now for the future of bringing in water from places that have lots of water. We spend a lot of money on other things. Why not look at the priority of water for ranchers and farmers, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, 13% of our revenue comes from agriculture in this state, a dry state. Think about that. It's critical. Thank you. All right, Mr. Windler. New Mexico continues to struggle with child well-being in the state. The state created an early childhood education and care department to take on this issue. What do you think state lawmakers can do to address issues facing child well-being in New Mexico? Turn control back over to parents, okay? The first teachers, the first caregivers of our children are the parents. That's the first level of government in our society, in any society. But we're having the state taking over more and more of that um, endeavor, okay? So early childhood, yeah, but where should it be placed? on the parents. The legislator could be focusing more resources on how they can actually help the parents, okay, to deal with the children and, and all the problems that we're encountering with the poverty, so forth and so on. So I don't see the emphasis in that area as much as I'd like. I was principal of a school where we had two pre-Ks. And look at, uh, what was it, uh, back in 1965, Head Start. Has any research been done to follow up on what had already been done since 1965 with Head Start? I don't think so. See, we don't go back and research and follow through on what already has been done so that Ms. we can make the right investments for the future. Okay, that's time. Yeah. Ms. Cadena. 
among many, showing up for the little ones in New Mexico, our young people, our kids, our future generations, is among the biggest responsibilities and burdens of being in elected office. When I think about this incredible fund we've established, and that fund has money pouring into it right now, thanks to the increasing revenues and the high price of oil these days, we need to be pretty smart about the decisions we make in that spend. What I believe, and I certainly agree with um, the folks at this table in this conversation, is that families need resources and support to make the best decisions for themselves. Again, um, I think that what we need to do, especially as elected leaders that come from outside of Albuquerque and Santa Fe, is make sure that we are having capacities and budget streams and revenue coming to local districts, local municipalities, local folks, so that we can decide best how to show up for the little ones in our care. Thank you. Okay, we're moving on to the next question. Same topic, education continues to be a challenge facing New Mexico, what are efforts that you would support to improve education in our state? We'll start with Representative Laura Cadena. I believe that we need to send more of the educational budgets to the districts to decide best what's going to meet the needs of their students and families. Um, I was a bit frustrated in recent political years with surges of money uh, we, as we should, have high bars for accountability, deliverables, outcomes, oversight of what happens in a young person's educational path. But I also believe that when we say to school districts, if you want this money, you have to do it our way, that's economic coercion. School districts across this widely rural, widely diverse state know best how to meet the needs of their families, and we need to entrust in them the power to do so. If there's a school district that elects, instead of adding 10 more days to the calendar, to hire 10 more art teachers and music teachers and social workers um, and OTs, then I wanna say to those school districts, you know what we expect, you better deliver, you get to decide how to show up for your students. Okay, thank you. Same question, candidate Wendler. Have the money follow the child, okay? school tax credits, okay, some people call it vouchers, but there are pros and cons in, in all of these efforts, okay, but obviously what's going on now has not been working. When we're 50th again, or 51, depending if you're gonna count in Puerto Rico or whatever, I mean, we're at the bottom of the barrel. That is so embarrassing. How can, with all the money that's been thrown at this for a number of years, and we're not getting, you talk about a business model, by the way, I've been a private business person for over 45 years, as well as serving in the public sector, as well as a school administrator, teacher, and so on and so on. So a business model says we're not getting a very good return on our investment, folks. Throwing more money at the same thing? There's got to be some other ways of looking at this. Turn control back over to parents. Okay, let them make the choice. Where do they want to send their child? Okay, and the kind of system that we you, have. Thank you, Mr. Wendler. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Wendler, I'll address this next question to you first. Mm -hmm. School staffing shortages are impacting many communities in our country. What do you think state lawmakers can do to ensure that New Mexico will have enough teachers in the future? Oh, wow, well, that's, you know, why does a teacher go into that profession? And I do call it a profession, okay? And I have found after 37 years in, the, in that business, that they do so because that's their passion. It's not about the money, although that helped, don't get me wrong. <laughs> if you want to throw more money at it, they'll take it, and that's understandable. But I guess go into their passion and let them feel proud of what they are. I used to say, you're, elect, you're double E's, and this university here, double E's are what? Electrical engineers. You're educational engineers, teachers. Be proud of that. Be proud of what you're doing. And I, we are so blessed to have such wonderful teachers. We really do. And they've got such a heavy load on, the, on them that's been imposed upon them by the state legislature, unfortunately. I won't get into that. But you know, just let them have the pride that they deserve to have. You, we used to respect teachers. Thank you very much. Ms. Cadena. Absolutely. Um, I'm gonna agree on that point too. We need to respect teachers. I don't know that we've ever lived up to that promise or that commitment. 
Um, my parents were both teachers. My mom taught elementary ed for 30 years before retiring in this district, and my father was still teaching um, New Mexico government in history at Alamogordo High School um, before he died of COVID in the early days of the pandemic before the vaccines were available. And I saw the lift they carried every day, and I saw why they did it. They cared about those students in their classroom. I'm incredibly proud that in the last couple of years, we've made significant room and, and, and commitments and follow through to pay teachers closer to what they're worth. Yet teachers are leaving in droves because we don't have the school systems and the support networks and the community respect for what they do. And we need to do something different. Okay, we're moving on to the next question. New Mexico's workforce has been challenged as the state has been losing its working age population. What are some things that state lawmakers can do to help keep working age people in the state? We're starting with Representative Laura Cadena. There is so much we have to do to build better relationships with New Mexico's small business community and New Mexico's economic developers. And when I imagine that, I think of the folks who wake up with grit and hustle and want to put their best into something that matters, whether it's a service, um, a product, something that they know is going to impact the lives of our communities. We have a stretch to make this happen. Certainly here in southern New Mexico, we're far away from Santa Fe, and sometimes the ideas that are passed out of this body or moved by the governor's office don't reflect the realities of our business owners every day. I'm committed and have shown myself to be open and accountable to working relationships with our local chamber and the New Mexico Chamber of Commerce, including passing, leading, and getting signed into law some of their priority bills. I continue to say, let's have these conversations, let's make them bipartisan, and let's make them concrete. Thank you. Candidate Wendler, same question. You know, small business, you know, that's the backbone of our country. And this community here in Donana County, Las Cruces uh, area, so on and so on, small business uh, is the driving force for our economy. And meanwhile, manufacturing is the real base, basis for economy. Other jobs are uh, spinoff from manufacturing. We don't manufacture things like we used to, okay? That being said, small businesses uh, like restaurants, uh, I understand that uh, New Mexico has the highest, um, I guess, depletion of restaurants of the whole nation. And that's a service industry, and we build ourselves on tourism industry, uh, restaurants necessary for that. Uh, but if New Mexico is getting rid of restaurants because of the Chinese virus, COVID, I'm sorry, COVID thing, I understand that too. But and we have such a strong workforce here with strong worth ethics of people that are here uh, that people, not everybody wants to go to college. Thank you very much. Well, wait, I'm just getting started on that. The next question. <laughs> okay, next question. State lawmakers have worked in recent years to create in set tax incentives and rebates for the film industry in the state. Do you support these efforts? Also, are there other ways to create a sustainable future with this industry without depending heavily on taxpayers? Uh, candidate Wendler. I can kind of follow up on what I was just starting to get into, small business. Film industry is a business and you know we're happy to have jobs, that's true. I for one personally am kind of concerned about the quality of filmmaking today. Quite frankly, I don't watch movies anymore. Uh, they are not family entertainment in my humble opinion, okay? And I think a lot of people feel the same way. The language and everything is not acceptable. That being said, let's get back to small businesses. When the government gets involved in making uh, uh, choices on winners and losers, big boxes as we used to call them versus the mom and pop operation. We're not seeing the mom and pop operations like we used to. We go back to restaurants. Where are they now? Okay, a lot of them have just, they're gone. That's so sad. And it's unfortunate. We've got to continue to do what we can to help with small businesses. You read a lot about, oh, we're giving a lot of uh, tax incentives and rebates and et cetera, et cetera, for big corporations. And that's understandable. But what about the local person here who wants to okay, uh, thank you, sir. put a business thank together? You. Yes, candidate. Continue. I absolutely support New Mexico's film incentive. And I am proud to talk about the real life implications of what the film industry means to so many New Mexican families. 
certainly there are thousands of New Mexicans that have fascinating, adventurous jobs bringing movies and shows to life in New Mexico. But the piece that we also need to talk about is what the spend takes to pull that incentive back on a production. That money doesn't come out of the general fund. It doesn't come from our oil and gas revenue. Those tax incentives only become real life if a movie or production shows up here, spends here with New Mexico businesses, and then gets a return just on their unique spend. What's real is that for all of those dollars put into New Mexico, there are jobs and there are New Mexico businesses, New Mexico caterers, New Mexico dry cleaners, New Mexico wood and lumber companies. In order to get that refund, we are spending, film industry is spending a lot of money that is moving economic development in our communities every day. Okay, next question. Lawmakers in New Mexico do not get paid a salary. They do receive per diem for help with travel expenses, but do not make a salary. Do you support efforts to pay New Mexico state representatives and state senators a full-time salary, yes or no? And please explain. We'll start with Representative Lara Cadena. I do support um, this effort to make New Mexico a paid legislature. It's easy to say and be quip about it, but really you get what you pay for. And in New Mexico, while we do have some incredible champions who've shown up, sometimes at personal sacrifice and compromise and expense for their families, we also don't get to commit to this full time. So what that means is that I, for this upcoming 60 day session, will get about $10,000 to care for myself over 60 days. As I look to lodge myself, have somewhere to say that's safe and private and discreet, I'm probably spending six or 8,000 to find somewhere to stay with a little bit left to feed myself. What that means is that I can't spend any money home. Most of my colleagues are independently wealthy or retired or have their own private practice as an attorney or an inter insurance brokerage or something else. If we want our politics to reflect the diversity of our families, we need to pay Thank for you. folks to get to Santa Fe and serve. Candidate Wendler, same question. I think in general I would not support paying legislators. And I know there's, that's quite a controversial question. Uh, but as I think about that, I would, I'm proud to serve, okay? As a matter of fact, if you go back in the history of our country, uh, it was an honor to serve. People would come and ask those people in the community, would you serve for us on the legislature and other capacities? So it's an honor. And are we going to keep that spirit of serving? If you're going to start paying, okay, then, you know, it kind of clouds the issue a little bit, I believe. Uh, but don't forget, the legislators can get a retirement if they serve a sufficient length of time. Then they do get a retirement. So there is something in the future for that. So don't discount the retirement um, fringe benefit, I might add. Uh, but you know that we need to look into that a little bit more thank you okay next question there have been calls for reform reforming the public employee retirement association in new mexico currently members are not required to have relevant qualifications specific to pension or investment fund management the pair of board oversees a trust fund that has a value of over 17 billion dollars do you support efforts to reform this board? If so, how? Candidate Wendler, I'll start with you. Okay, you mentioned para, but what about uh, teacher retirement, TR, okay? Teacher retirement, that's also another pension fund too. And you know, we've been downgraded uh, New Mexico on uh, the Moody and those people that do those ratings because uh, we're, we're not uh, funded properly overall. So we obviously need to do something about that. Uh, but I'm also concerned about the teacher retirement too. It's not equitable with the para, okay? And that's been that way for a long time. Why not maybe merge the two, for example? I don't know how all that would work out, but we need to look at that. Uh, it does need to be obviously uh, uh, thought about and reformed in some way perhaps because of the rating that we're receiving in the financial districts. Okay. Thank you. Representative Cadena. Yes, thank you. I have taken weighty and complicated votes to make needed changes to para previously, and I imagine there's more to come. 
For me, what's really important is that we are hearing from para employees and para uh, retirees already in the system about what they want that reform to look like. And to be real, it can be controversial. I remember on previous para votes, five minutes in, I'd have somebody say, para will sink if you don't vote for this. And the next five minutes, I'd, I'd have a different association of, of para employees telling me that if we pass this bill, it would be the end of everything. It means so much. But what I come back to is that our state made a commitment to these employees, to these state workers, across a wide variety of jobs. And we have to make sure that no matter what, these systems are fully funded and that when we make changes, they reflect the leadership of our state workers and the desires they have to make sure this fund continues into their future. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us. We unfortunately are out of time. We wanna thank both District 33 New Mexico State representative candidates for joining us. We want to thank incumbent Democratic candidate, State Representative Micaela Lara Cadena, and Republican challenger Charles Windler. Thank you to our co-moderator Kim Sorensen in the League of Women Voters of Southern New Mexico. I'm Anthony Moreno. Again, thank you for joining us. And remember, Election Day is Tuesday, November 8th.